Have you ever wondered, what's the power behind the weather? What makes it tick? In just a few moments time, we're going to see the true source of all weather. And this is it, the sun, the fuse that lights the weather. It's over a hundred times bigger than the Earth, and every second it releases enough energy to power the USA for nine million years. It also takes one million years for the heat at its core to reach the surface. Once it does, it makes its journey here in just eight and a half minutes. A journey that ends in a blaze of glory every single day. All that blinding heat and light is blasted out through space towards us. As it homes in on our little planet, it's at its most intense, heading for the steaming jungles of the tropics. The sun's rays hit the equator. It's the start of heat's epic journey around the planet. But to find out what it does to the weather down here, I'm heading to where the sun's energy is most intense. Trapped beneath the jungle canopy, all that heat creates one of the most extreme environments there is. So to find out what all that heat does to the weather, I'm going to spend the next 24 hours in the jungles of Belize. For most of the year, the sun lies directly overhead. So there are no conventional seasons here as we know them. Just hot and wet, and then a little less wet. Even the daily weather is delightfully predictable. There are clear skies in the morning, showers in the afternoon, and clear skies again in the evening. It's a weatherman's dream. The one wild card in all this predictability is the vast amount of energy constantly being built up in all this heat and humidity. It's all that energy that makes this place as cloudy as it is. The heat warms the land, rainwater evaporates from the vast amount of vegetation and rises. The water vapor condenses into tiny droplets that create huge clouds. The droplets collide, growing larger until gravity pulls them down again. The weather here is in a continuous cycle fueled by heat. And whether you're in the water or on the riverbank, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because everything is permanently soaked. I always thought that the tropics, where the sun's energy is at its most intense, would be the hottest place on Earth. But I'm wrong. I'm about to get out of the frying pan and get into the fire. I'm heading to the hottest place on Earth. From the heart of the tropics, all that warm air rises, dumping its rain as it goes. At around nine miles high, at the edge of the troposphere, it can rise no further. So it begins to head both north and south of the equator. 1,500 miles later, at about 30 degrees latitude, the air begins to sink back down to Earth, warming as it drops. Where it falls, it creates two strips of arid land that circle the globe. And that's where you'll find the great deserts of the world. And the greatest of them all is the Sahara. Having left all that wet heat in the jungle, I'm about to find out what dry heat does to the weather. Ah. Ah. 
The air above me here is so warm that water cannot condense into rain. And so it hangs there, trapped above the very places that need it most. And just look around me at the results. Theoretically, there's more moisture in the sky above me now than over the skies of Britain. And yet it's completely clear. In fact, this desert only gets a measly three inches of rain every year. And even when it does rain, the sun's rays are so intense that it evaporates 200 times the amount that falls. So, this is what we're left with. The blazing sun cooks the desert rocks, causing the minerals to expand so much that the rocks eventually shatter. Over thousands of years, powerful desert winds grind them all to sand. The Sahara covers an area over three million square miles, almost as big as the USA. It's also record-breakingly hot. In 1922, the highest air temperature ever recorded was taken here, a staggering 58 degrees Celsius, 136.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Just one of these dunes is made up of thousands of tons of sand. All those tiny grains go to make up our most romantic and enduring image of the world's deserts. Endlessly driven by the winds, like some half-frozen ocean. This is an amazing place. The vast stillness is completely overwhelming. It's timeless. There's a real sense that nothing here has ever changed. But that's an illusion. Beneath this ocean of sand lies an incredible secret. In 1981, 140 miles above my head, the space shuttle Columbia looked down upon this desert and took a high-tech snapshot. What they saw took them completely by surprise. Instead of a flat and barren expanse of sand, the infrared revealed mountains and river valleys underneath. That picture revealed a hidden world only a few meters beneath my feet. As they saw through the layers of sand, they were amazed to discover that 35 million years ago, the Sahara was once a great fertile savanna with rivers and lush meadows. Over time, small changes in the global climate meant that life simply withered and died. We like to think of the desert as timeless, but in fact, it's constantly changing. Here in the dry heat of the desert, my journey